sports, talented brands. Woo! This is the sit down, standing tall together. And today's guest is Irish canoeist Liam Jago, who's fresh from winning Ireland's first ever K1 gold medal at the World Cup in Pau. Liam, you're very welcome to the sit down. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. So I want to wish, uh, say congratulations to you, first of all, um, for your gold medal recently for the World Thank Cup you. Gold in Pau. Thank you. Um, yeah, brilliant way to finish off the, the season, a short season, but a, a good one. Yeah. Um, well, did that take you by surprise, the fact that you won? Um, I had prepared pretty well for, the, for that race. Uh, but I trained really, really well over the whole summer and just didn't have any competitions to kind of see where I was at um, competition wise. So um, I was feeling really confident before the race. Uh, I knew uh, how I was paddling at the moment and uh, I know the course very well. I live in Po, so um, no, I was confident. Uh, definitely, I was hoping to win obviously, but <laughs> from there on uh, going and doing it was, uh, was a whole other, other story. And I watched the uh, the video of you actually taking part and of you winning, but it looks like such a physically demanding um, sport. When you're going through the race, what's going through your mind? And did you know that you were going to win it? When when did you realize I've won, or do you know during the race how you're doing? It is it is a very physical sport. It it mixes the physical physicality and technique uh, really well. I think it's I think it's a fine balance. You can't just be all power and, and no technique. And during the run, yeah, I I started off really well. Um, I wanted to take some risk and just really go for it. I we kind of sat down with my coach before the run and just said, okay, we'll try and um, go and win this and uh, not think about anything else. Just try and take all the the fast lines and and take the risky moves. And that's what I did and. Just kept on taking those risks, kept on doing the the moves really fast, and uh, yeah, towards the bottom, I knew I was on a really good run. And once I got past that last upstream uh, upstream gate, I just sprinted to the final. And even before seeing the time, I, I knew it was a really good run. So I was just really thrilled to put down a, a big run in a World Cup final. And what's going through your mind? I mean, um, working in a sport like that um, and at such a high level, you must have made so many sacrifices throughout your life, missed out on other things that people not involved in um, sports at your level. So what was going through your mind when you, when you won? I don't think of it as a sacrifice. It's a, it's a huge investment for sure. I've been training uh, very, very hard since pretty much 12 years old. My dad, uh, my dad used to coach me. So uh, I was looking that aspect. I had a coach at home, so I had great training plans straight away, right from the get go. But um you miss out on some things, but you experience some unbelievable, uh, unbelievable things as well through the sport. Um, I got to visit some incredible places, paddle in some beautiful, beautiful uh, rivers. Um, went to Bosnia when I was 15 for my first junior uh, European championships. And those are memories I'll keep forever um, with me. So I, I don't see it as a sacrifice. It's not always easy, but um, I do it because I love it. You mentioned um, your dad is was helping you in sport. Um, you have a very interesting background in that you grew up in Clare till the age of seven and you played um, a few different sports. And um, please just talk me through how you came to choosing um, canoeing and, um, you know, you grew, you grew up in different countries and how did that affect you? Yeah, I think you could definitely say I've, I have had a, a multicultural upbringing. Um, I, I was born in, in Brittany in France. Uh, straight away, I moved to Switzerland for two years in Saturday in the mountains. Then uh, moved to Balivon uh, in Ireland, where I have my first memories. And um, yeah, my, my dad used to own a sea kayaking company in uh, Balivon in the late 90s. And so that's where paddling kind of started for me. Um, so I remember going, going paddling with my dad sometimes, um, playing some Gaelic football as well. Uh, my skills of, in Gaelic football are probably no good anymore, but, <laughs> but um, they're, they're great memories. And, um, and it's definitely, yeah, my dad was definitely, has definitely been and it still is a huge influence uh, on me. Um, he's the one that put me into a boat and that 
kind of gave me the opportunity to live this lifestyle. Um, yeah. Before before I was fourteen, I was traveling all over the place, going training on rivers in Slovenia, Slovakia. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. What was it that uh, made you stick with canoeing? I've always loved the sport, just being outside, uh, out on the river. It's it's brilliant. It, it changes all the time. Uh, you can paddle on all sorts of different kinds of, of rivers, artificial, natural, things you see as well, because it's a sport where you have to travel a lot uh, to, to train. Uh, we race all over the place, all over Europe, countries that I might not have visited before if I hadn't paddled. And... Um, uh, the training as well is something that I really enjoy. Um, I started racing quite early. The first international race I did, I was 14 years old. It was in Slovenia. And uh, I was quite successful straight away. I won two of those two international races I did when I was 14. And uh, I just loved it. I'm, I'm really competitive. I love the sport. So it's, it's perfect for me. And um, so you say you're very competitive. Um, do you know what makes you competitive? What motivates you? Um, I don't know. I love training and, and bettering myself. And I also like that, that confrontation, that, that uh, competition aspect of trying to, to be the fastest on the day. Um, I, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, it's all a, a game for me. And uh, yeah, so I can definitely say my, my work uh, is, a, is, is a game. <laughs> Yes, and um, we were speaking a, bit, a little bit earlier about your training schedule um, and it's still really full on. Tell me about what's a typical day for you? Right now it's quite busy. Um, so we're yeah, getting, getting into winter training now. So it's essentially two sessions a day. Um, I'd spend yeah, two or three uh, sessions in the gym during the week and uh, the rest of the time on the water, either doing flat water to improve on my conditioning or uh, on the white water, uh, working on my um, white wa white water abilities or, and technique. Okay, and is it true that you wouldn't be able to do this sport in Ireland if you were living here? Because you're based in France, you have access to um, the, the type of water that you need. Um, is that true? I think it's possible, and I think some of the lads have showed it um, through their performances. It, it's just very, it's just uh, a lot more difficult to train in Ireland at the moment because the infrastructure is, uh, the infrastructure, the whitewater courses we have in Ireland are, are inexistent. There is no uh, international standard whitewater course. And in a sport like Canoe Salon, that's extremely difficult. It, it involves then traveling an awful lot. The guys who train in Dublin, are are always uh, abroad training um traveling um so my choice to, choice to move in po is is strictly um professional really i uh i think there's there's no emotion in in performance um in training i'm going to go where i can train the best and where i can improve the best and right now i think po is uh, is the best place for me to train i have a a world class uh, whitewater course um, and perfect training conditions yeah. and um, how has Ireland supported you um, because you're you're based abroad but obviously you lived here for for years and you, you've kept your accent very well um, but and um, how has Ireland supported you well I, I still have a, a lot of family in Ireland obviously so I, I receive a huge amount of support from them and it's it's always really heartwarming um, and um, in terms of, of support, I mean, Sport Ireland, the Olympic Council have always been supportive of me, have really helped me in my career and have given me the opportunity to, to, opportunity to race in different places and to have access to coaching and, uh, and all of that, those sort of things. And um, yeah, I, uh, I'm sorry, I got a bit lost there in the question there. <laughs> Yeah, no, just interested in to see how, um, you know, um, Ireland has supported you because, you know, we're obviously so proud to have someone like you representing us um, at the Tokyo Olympics. And I wanted to ask you, you know, it's, it's been put um, off this year till next year, but um, how um, has that affected your mental health? And for all of the athletes that are going to be competing, um, you know, you'll be a year older, there's another year to go. How has it affected you um, mentally? 
I think at this stage in my career, it's it's not a, a really bad thing for me. I was 24. I'm 24 this year. Um, next year, I'll be 25. So I'll still be peaking. So from a performance point of view, uh, it doesn't bother me. Uh, obviously, it's been a complicated year, complicated year for everybody. Um, but I, I just um, I just kept on training hard. Um, tried not to think too much about Tokyo, really. Just tried to push myself every single day and improve as an athlete, as a paddler. And, uh, and that's it. And that's where my focus was at. Was at. And um, now Tokyo is right around the corner. I'm really excited to, to hopefully get, get out to Japan soon and, uh, and get back into that Olympic, uh, Olympic mood. Yeah, and do you feel lucky because, as you, as you said, that you're only 24, you'll only be 25 when you're competing in the Olympics. So if you'd been a bit older, um, maybe would you be maybe passing your peak um, age and could it have affected you on a different level in, if you were a few years older? Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's definitely giving me a, an extra year to improve um, that I think I've used really, really well. Um, for, absolutely, for uh, someone who's a little bit further in their career, it might be more difficult. But I think um, one year in the slalom, it won't make a, that huge of a difference. Um, it can only be good, a good thing, I think. Um, that's the way I see it anyways. Right. And have you any um, different opportunities this year that maybe you wouldn't have had time for um, in other times um, if Tokyo had gone ahead this year? Yeah, no, I I, uh, I spent a lot of time uh, this summer just training. I uh, I really wanted to use this time off to to good use uh, to improve on on my paddling. So I, I worked on a lot of different things that I might not have worked on uh, had this situation not happened. And uh, I think I really improved physically. I just uh, saw it as a, an extra couple of months to to prepare for for Tokyo and. Uh, and that's it really. It's been a lot of paddling, um, paddling, gym work, a bit of climbing and, and that's it. And as a sport, do you find it dangerous at all? Because it doesn't look like it's, it's physically so demanding and obviously you need a lot of upper body strength. Do you ever feel like you're in danger when you're out there? No, not in canoe slalom. Um, canoe slalom, the, the courses we paddle on aren't too, uh, don't have too much volume. Um, so it's, it feels quite safe anyways, but definitely uh, the guys doing a, a creaking, um, extreme uh, kayaking, it's a whole different different story, um, but I, I haven't gotten into that yet. Um, I don't know if I will. <laughs> and uh, I want to ask you about sport as a business. Um, how do you think Canoe Sal Salem fits into that? I think it's a, it's a, a thrilling sport to watch. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. Um, it's, a, it's exciting even for the untrained eye. Yeah, and recently the, the IOC has, uh, the ICF has proposed a new discipline for a slalom at the Olympics for 2024. So that's quite ex exciting as well. It's called extreme slalom. And I think it's a, it's gonna, it's a great opportunity as well for, for me to, to compete in another, another discipline at the Olympics. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I definitely think it's, it's nice to watch. So is that going to be even more, um, more difficult and physically demanding and um, more dangerous as I would see it than what you're currently doing? It's a, it's a very physical uh, discipline. It, it doesn't resemble what I do at all. Um, it's, uh, it'll be a, a big challenge for me anyways, but... Um, I wouldn't say it's it's dangerous. It's definitely a bit more of a fight. It's a border cross, so there's four uh, four paddlers going off a ramp together down the course. Um, I think the worst thing that could happen to you is paddle, paddle to the face. But <laughs> and um, most athletes get sponsorship. Can you tell me about who is sponsoring you and how it's helping and supporting you um, as you um, get closer to the Olympics? Yeah, so there's been a, a big uh, change for me since uh, end of 2018 uh, when I met Mike Corcoran, who happens to be the last uh, C1 paddler from Ireland to qualify for the Olympics. And uh, I, was, uh, I wasn't with a coach at that time. And uh, Mike decided to sponsor me, uh, help me out to, to find a coach and to, to finance that coach. So I got to start working with uh, Nico Pisci 
who went to the Olympics for France in 2004. And also uh, through that work with Nico to start working with the sports approach, which, uh, which helps me with uh, my S&C training plans and, uh, and career management. So uh, we were speaking about uh, post-career uh, opportunities, but they also help me uh, uh, keep my feet on the ground on that, on that uh, regards. Um, how do they help you pe keep your feet on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> um, Everything is very structured. I, I know exactly where I'm going with my training plans. I'm very happy with that. And uh, they also uh, remind me that uh, there's, a, there's a career after sports um, and uh, how, to, how to use that, um, the career I've had uh, in business later on. And um, how has uh, Mike inspired you with his own background? Mike was a was a great T1 paddler. First of all, he uh, he's the last T1 paddler to win a World Cup medal as well in '93, and it was he was a touch away from uh, winning bronze at the Olympics in '92. So he's a huge huge inspiration, anyways. And it's always great to talk about talk to him about his uh, his career and his experience. Um, he was at the World Cup in Poe as well, so it was nice to share that moment with him as well. Brilliant. And um, sponsorship going forward, is there any sort of um, dream sponsor that you'd love to work with or anything like that? Oh, dream sponsor. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Jess Fox, uh, who's an Australian K1 paddler. Uh, she's probably the goat of, uh, of canoe slalom. <laughs> and uh, she has some pretty cool sponsors. She works with Red Bull, Adidas. So th those are definitely the, the, the sponsors I'd, uh, I'd aim to, to get, but also, uh, like I said, I, I love uh, uh, cruising around in my van. So uh, if Reno want to hook me up with a <laughs> with a kitted out van, I won't say no. Well, you never know. You're doing so well. You're definitely on a winning streak. So I wouldn't be surprised if you get um, hit up from any of those brands in the in the future. Uh, that'd be that'd be nice. Commercially, what brands would you like to um, use in sports, and what brands support you? I um I work a lot with a lot of a lot with uh, outdoor gear, so I uh, I love Patagonia equipment, um, gear that lasts a long time and that's uh, that's very practical. And uh, and then uh, in the gym, I'm I'm usually with Under Armour, um, that works for me the best. And um, yeah, it's just uh, trying to interest brands that uh that want to support me in, in my journey towards Tokyo and then Paris and, and then hopefully LA. And does the, the different brands make a difference, do you find, to, um, to how you perform? Um, definitely, I mean, nutrition-wise, um, the brands you use are, are very, very important. You need to be batch tested, um, sport informed, certified. Um, the equipment I use in the gym it has to be, I spend a lot of time in the gym and outside, so the equipment I, I, I use has to be good. Um, so I definitely um, make sure to have the best equipment there. Okay, great. And um, um, I wanted to ask you about um, your challenges. Like you seem Lynn, to be such a positive person and you're using everything that's happening to your advantage and even seeing it as extra time to, um, to, to keep practicing and training and improving. But what are the challenges that are facing you, um, you know, outside of sport and um, in your personal life, for example, and uh, where you're based? Or are there any challenges for you? I've uh, I've recently finished uh, my degree in uh, university, um, so I said to myself that up until the Olympics, I'll uh, solely focus on on paddling and and uh, improving for for that big race big race next year. And um, after that, I uh, I'm not too sure. I'm I'm planning on uh, on becoming a volunteer firefighter um, after the Olympics, um, just because this whole situation is kind of um kind of made me want to to help out when i can um Amazing. you do feel a little bit a little bit um useless when you're stuck at home and and uh people are are fighting against this uh this pandemic uh, my i've plenty of family members who are nurses so uh definitely sensibilized to that so that's something i'd like to do after the games anyways yeah 
Yeah, okay, so I um, wanted to ask you, I'm kind of guessing we already know the answer, but um, for your career so far, what has been your favorite sporting moment? Favorite sporting moment? Um, obviously the World Cup in Poe was a pretty, pretty good one uh, for me, but I have so many to pick from as well, even when the results didn't go my way, um, just experiences. Um, Coming second at the at the Junior World Championships in Australia in 2014 was was brilliant. Um, my first Junior European Championships in Banja Luka was was a great moment as well. Um, yeah, it's really hard to pick from. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask your advice for any upcoming athletes, anyone young, um, and maybe they're struggling at the moment. You seem to have your um, be very mentally strong. Um, how much of that do you attribute to um, being getting a lot of physical exercise? Um, yeah, I think it's definitely it's very important. Important, I think sport um, really helps you in life in general. In general, I think everything I'm doing now is going to help me later on when I'm not uh, a high performance athlete. Um, so I definitely encourage anyone to to pick up a sport, anything really, um, at any level as well. Um, you don't have to train two, three times a day to, to get the benefits of sports. Um, find something you love and, and, uh, and spend time doing it. Yeah. And so that's your advice for uh, young people who want to become, to, to make it to the Olympics. If someone had told you when you had taken up the sport, I know you were very young, that you'd make it to the Olympics, would you have taken it seriously? Or was it something that was always in your mind that I can do this? Like, did you have that anything is possible type of an attitude? It's definitely something I, I've been dreaming of for forever, really. Um, I can't remember the first time I thought about the Olympics, but it feels like it's something that's always been a part of me. Um, I started paddling slalom, I must have been seven. And I think straight away my dad was like, oh, you can go do the Olympics like uh, Mardikin, who's a Slovak, Simon Padre did the Olympics at 17 and won them. And so when I heard that, I was like, oh, I'll just do that then. <laughs> As if it was nothing. You know? So it's definitely something I've always dreamed of and I've always put a lot of effort into um, making it become a reality. Um, so yeah, it's. I never thought to myself I wasn't going to go to the Olympics. Maybe it's a bit arrogant, I don't know, but it's always been the, the goal. And I'll just ask you some lighthearted questions now. Um, so you're obviously extremely busy <laughs> with training for the Olympics. Um, is there anything else you have time for in your life? Um, any other interests or hobbies? It takes a lot of time for sure, but uh, I'm, I'm, some, I'm very active. I, I love being outside. So as soon as I can grab my surfboard and, and go surfing in the Basque country, I will, um, I love to go bouldering. So as soon as I get the opportunity, I go. Um, but yeah, my life is definitely centered around uh, outdoor sports. Um, I play a, bit, a little bit of the guitar here and there for, for fun, nothing crazy, but um, yeah, and, and that's pretty much it. I have uh, I've a kitted out van as well that I, I love uh, as soon as I get some time off to, to get the van and then drive off, go uh, go discover some new river, or or go and uh, and surf somewhere on the coast. Wow, you're pretty multi talented. So you played the guitar as well, and you're a surfer. My my guitar skills are not great. I have a guitar, but <laughs> I don't know if I can say that I definitely play the guitar. But um, I have a guitar, anyways. <laughs> Okay, Liam. Well, multi-talented Liam uh, Jegu, thank you so much for joining us. And um, it was a pleasure speaking to you today. And I'm sure you have a very busy schedule ahead of you for the rest of the day, whether you're training or surfing or playing the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. And of course, uh, the best of luck um, from everyone here at Sport and Doors and um, from everyone in Ireland. Uh, the best of luck and uh, We'll be cheering for you, of course. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. What an inspiring young athlete. And that is all for this week. Thanks once again to Liam and to everyone continuing to download and listen to this sit down. We truly do appreciate your support. And if you're interested in partnering with any of our talent, the 
Sporting Doris platform is now live. You can review and engage talent at www.platform.sportandoris.com or download the Sporting Doris app through the Apple Store or Google Play. Be sure to follow Sport and Doris on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram. And until next time, stay safe and take care. Sports, talent and brands.